All right, I wanted to talk about President Biden's first press conference yesterday. I was going to talk about it yesterday instead of today, but I just, I had some things I was doing. Um, this is significant for a couple of reasons. One being that it's taken a protracted amount of time for Biden to have a first press conference, um, which has been noted by the media. They've asked members of his staff, when is he going to have one? And it seemed like most of my criticisms of it can actually be directed at the other individuals in it instead of the president himself, which is very unusual for me because I criticize Biden all the time. But I think he handled the questions well. I was really disgusted by the fact that in an era where you have hundreds of thousands of Americans dying over this virus, you would find it appropriate to place a greater emphasis or to really even talk at all about an election that is more than three years away. So there's this nice elitism contrast between people dying every single day from a disease and, oh, let's talk about this election uh, that is several years away because it can get us some clicks and highlights and it's, it's good for the press because there was actually mentioned that a lot of these, um, news outlets, whether it's MSNBC, CNN, whichever one, wanted Trump to stay in office or at least preferred him as president because it was good for their networks. They had, uh, I guess, his opposition tuning in to watch what they were saying about him. So this is kind of a hearkening back to that where instead of addressing several pressing questions that are going on, they spent such a large focus of the press conference on a topic that I really couldn't care less, but I think most people couldn't care either. I mean, you just had a COVID bill pass that doesn't have a $15 minimum wage or really a wage increase at all. Instead, we're still stuck at the national $7.25. Amid an era where people are being laid off and fired in record numbers, and you're talking about an election that is several years away, that is not impacting or changing the daily circumstances of the majority of people in the United States. The only question they asked him that was probably worth the damn, just on its own, like it has merits to be asked is about immigration, um, which I already talked about how it's it's always funny to watch people, you know, like I, I could never understand the outrage over the Trump administration policy when you've literally had since the second Bush, uh, thousands over over a million excuse me illegal immigrants getting deported per president so it's it's really hard for me to take them seriously when it when you know now we must rally and protect these undocumented citizens um but that was you know something that i th i thought made sense to get asked and it was really disturbing as well because biden played the same game look at what trump did it was so terrible it's, but that's been going on now, another thing he said during this conference that really irritated me was his answer on Afghanistan, where um, he couldn't give an estimate date of when we would leave that country and stop being in that war we've been in since I was three, um, since 2001. And he really irritated me with this because the media, I would have liked to have seen them push back further on him with his answer. And it's mostly for this reason. When a politician our politicians, right, are not do not give concrete answers of when we can expect to see something done. We don't have an estimate to hold them to that time period, meaning that, you know, he could say, oh, I, I, I don't think we'll be there in a year. And then a year passes, but, you know, he already was kind of not wanting to fully commit to that timetable of getting out of there. That's why a lot of times people go on Twitter and they show where Biden said in 2014, that he thought uh, we would be out of Afghanistan or by 2014, we'd be out of Afghanistan. They, they pull up these statements where him or Obama would mention how we would eventually leave that conflict um, during the Obama administration's eight years and how it never came to pass. So I would have liked to have seen them go after him on that. Cause again, it's just, it, it's just more spinning of the wheels. They, they talk all this stuff, oh, we're making such progress, we're, we've got this peace deal, and then it, it falls out, the news barely covers it, and before you know it, we're in Afghanistan for 40 years. 
And a lot of people said that was, you know, something that uh, was ridiculous of me to say, but if we've already been there for two decades, it's it's not hard to see us being over there for another 5, 10, 15, and it just keeps going on and on. Because the media doesn't pay attention and the person in office is not held accountable for keeping the forever war, the signature forever war going on for some extraneous amount of time. Well, no, it was it was decent. I, I wish to, I'd say his performance was good, but the questions were kind of goofy. Um, there's a weird sensationalism about elections. Like, it's funny how they'll spend two or three years talking about who's going to run, who's going to run. Then when the person that runs actually gets elected, um, you know, you just, you just have, you have this pretty fresh new president, not his age, but just his administration being relatively new. Uh, and instead of asking, what is he going to do about these various topics like the Iran deal, the Paris Climate Agreement? Oh, are you going to run against Trump in four Which, how would he even know? He doesn't... <laughs> He doesn't dictate the Republican primary. But do you see how they spend years on an election? And then when the election finally happens and it's time to legislate, it's, it's given such little attention. Because, again, news is not informative in the United States. It's simply a way for them to uh, get attention. And that's why a lot of them want to pivot back to talking about Trump, even in a press conference that had nothing to do with him.